What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Jerome, and I'm here tonight with a review for the Real Housewives of Atlanta. This is season number 11. This is episode 13, I believe, and the episode was titled Tempers in Tokyo. So, without further ado, let's get started on the video. Alright, so this episode, it pretty much picks up where we left off last week, which was the argument with Tanya and uh, with Nini. This argument was stupid as shit to me, to be quite honest with you. And it's basically a one-sided argument because Nene don't want to listen to anything that Tanya is saying. And I'm just like, Tanya, you just wasting your breath arguing with a bitch that's like a brick wall. You just can blow and blow and blow, but the bitch is not going to move. Um, And, you know, t when they were arguing, Tanya started to cry. And, you know, everybody was trying to figure out why Tanya was crying. And I understood why she was crying because Nene was being a total B-I-T-C-H to Tanya. Like, come on. Like, y'all can see that this woman has been a bitch. But nobody wants to sit here and stand up to her. Like, are y'all that afraid of that? The big moose? Like, y'all can't be afraid of her. So, you know, Nene ended up leaving. I'm like, oh, so you want somebody to follow behind you and kiss your ass? Fuck out of here, Nene. Like, fuck out of here. So, you know, once she leaves, the girls, you know, Marlo and Cynthia tried to call Nene. But she didn't answer them. So then I, 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 Aya, Aya. Aya, I think that's her name, Anya, Aya, so, you know, the tour guy, she comes back, she has McDonald's for the girls, they are all happy at this point, so, um, you know, then she tells them that, you know, Nene was upset and she got in the cab and she left, big fucking whoop, who gives a fuck, for real, Nene is not the end of, like, she's not, she's not, oh, uh, she's just not the boss, like, I don't know why they try to kiss her ass, so, you know, then they all head back toward the hotel. So Eva tells the girls that the night's events is that they're going to go to the red light district. And, you know, Shamari asks what to wear. And, you know, um, Eva's like, don't wear no tennis shoes or something like that. <sighs> Why did she say that? Because then Marlo wants to talk about her looks. I'm like, Marlo, please do us all a favor and put your top lip and your bottom lip together and shut the fuck up. Um, and you know, when Marlo was going in on Eva's look and her clothes and all that kind of shit, I'm like, says the bitch whose clothes, says the bitch whose um, bag got, you know, didn't come to uh, Japan with her, but you ain't went and bought you no new clothes. Remember that. You the same person who I was talking about your fashions, this, your fashions, that, your fashions, your fashions, your fashions, but you don't have the money to go buy a new wardrobe in Japan. Keep that in mind. Um, so then Marlo also says to Eva that everything that Eva has modeled, you know, she has it in her closet. Yeah, bitch, either you had it boosted or you used some old man's pension, social security check, 401k, uh, you know, disability check, SSI check, you know, whatever you can come up with. You didn't pay for it your goddamn self. If you did pay for it, it was given to you by your sugar daddy, your pimp, your John, your whatever the fuck he is. Whew. But what I will say, Eva, she went the fuck in on Marlo. She read Marlo for dirt, filth, and dust. Like she read the shit out of her. And I was like, come on, Eva, read her. Read her down. I was living for it. Now, here's my thing, you know, um, Marlo talking about, you know, respect your elders. And then, you know, Mar Eva was like, I got two kids at home. And she was like, yeah, about two different, uh, you know, two different men. Well, bitch, if you probably hadn't reached the age of menopause by now, yo, would, if you had kids, bitch, how many different baby daddies would you have had by now if you hadn't had an abortion? We all would like to know that question. Remember that, Marlo. Remember, Marlo. Laying on your back, if you ain't using a condom, you could have had multiple babies by multiple Johns. Just saying. All right, so this next thing, you know, they kind of did it like how they did uh, earlier in the season with Candy and Portia about the Ty's birthday party. So we see um, Marlo, Cynthia, Eva, and uh, Portia. They went to go check on Nene, but Nene was like, I don't want to talk. Go away. I would say, fine, bitch. Deuces. I just came to check on your bitch ass. 
But you want to have a stank ass attitude, bitch, fuck you and the attitude. Because I don't need it and I don't want it. But we do see them later go back to check on her. And she's in a better mood this time. I'm like, girl, fuck out of here, man. So, you know, um, NeNe wants to say that, you know, her day started off bad, which we not, I'm not, I'm not even going to knock the fact that her day may have started off bad with Greg, you know, you know, him not answering her phone calls and then him texting her, going off on her. I'm not going to diminish that at all. Like, I'm really not. But the fact that you went off on Tanya for no reason, it was stupid. And they talk about that. You know, she's talking about how she didn't give a fuck, which that's fine if you didn't give a fuck. But you didn't have to say this to that girl in the way that you said it to her. Like, that was rude as fuck. Um, if I was telling you, I probably would have popped the shit out of that bitch. I'd be like, you might be a big bitch, but I'm going to knock your big ass the fuck down. Just saying. Um, but yeah, she downplayed everything. She was like, you know, um, when it came, she said she read everybody's fortunes. She read Candy's fortune. She read Porsche's fortune. And she read hers. But your but uh Tanya's is the only one that they showed us that you made any kind of comment on that she may marry someone else. And then she wanna say that um she was saying it in the sense of if Paul doesn't marry uh Tanya, someone else will. That ain't what you meant, and you know that ain't what you meant, so stop fucking playing. So then we see Tanya. Tanya is going over to Eva's room and you know, she's talking to Eva about it. And, you know, she was talking about how she was just shell shocked about Nene saying that she didn't give a fuck. And the reason why she and she's never been yelled at like that. And the reason why I think Tanya felt that way is because Nene, of all the girls, has, I guess, may have had a, you know, spent more time with uh, Tanya and her uh, guy, Paul. So I definitely get it. And she just didn't understand that approach at all. So then back in uh, Nene's room, you know, Cynthia is telling e um, Nene how, you know, uh, Eva read Marla for Filth, which she completely did, like, bitch. <coughs> She read your ass down like an encyclopedia. <laughs> Ooh, that was a good one. And then, you know, in the other room, Eva's talking about it. And, you know, she's basically like that. That was a long ass time coming. Like Marla's been asking for, which she clearly has. Because when they went to Destin, when she was talking about the room is bland, just like Eva. Y'all, oh my God. Somebody who do Marlo impressions and kills me every fucking week is Roxanne. Forrest Rocks. Like, I love when she does her Marlo impressions. God, that is funny. Like, go check out. If y'all are not, to people who are subscribed to me and y'all not subscribed to Roxanne, go subscribe to her. Forrest Rocks is a channel. And she also has a, um, another channel that she's doing, um, Planet Rocks, where she's doing, um, you know, planning. So go check out my girl Roxanne. Whew. I love Roxanne, man. Roxanne is my girl. Roxanne is actually the reason why I'm doing my YouTube channel. Like, I owe everything to this channel to Roxanne because she encouraged me to do it. So, again, if you guys are not subscribed to 4 is Rocks, please go subscribe to my girl. Okay, so then they go to the uh, Red Light District. The Red Light District is not at all what Candy is it to be. Candy was hoping for some girl on girl action. Like, oh, girl, you just love you some girl on girl action, don't you? We see you. We see each other. We see each other. So, um, everyone went with the exception of Portia. Portia just wasn't feeling good, which, I mean, I understand that she's pregnant. You know, she might have been having sickness, whatever. So, for Nini to be in her confessional to kind of downplay a girl, shut the fuck up. Nobody gives a fuck about you. Um,. So then they go and do karaoke and surprise, surprise, they have an escape song. Understanding. God. Why did they have to have understanding? The only good note that Candy did in that song was that hot, is it that whistle register that she did. That is the only good note in that song from her. But they sing it and it was good. And, you know, we did, we had to hear her goat yodeling. God, that goat yodeling just works on my nerves when it comes to Candy. Thank God I have not had, thank God, I don't know if she's really sang on Celebrity Big Brother, if she has, oh, no, when they start singing songs, Celebrity Big Brother tells, Big Brother says, stop singing, so she can't really sing, thank the good Lord. Alright, so then we have day three of the um, trip. So, Eva, she is texting Tanya, and she is texting Tanya in like complete sentences to Siri. Siri, tell Tanya this, period. 
followed by I need you to do this period followed by da 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 period if I was here I'd be like bitch can you stop with all these periods like I'm over period but basically she's texting Tanya to tell Tanya that you know she may be going back to the United States because her mom and her aunt are um, getting ready to take her grandfather off of his breathing tube so you know then Tanya texts all the girls letting all the girls know what's going on with Eva so they all show up, even Marlo, they all show up to, um, you know, uh, Eva's room just to support Eva. And bitch, it took 13 episodes in this season for Marlo to get her own confessional. You've had two confessionals in two different seasons. Whereas Tanya has had one confessional in, I think, like three episodes in this one season. That is so sad, girl. And if you blinked hard enough, you would miss Marlo's confessional. Um, so yeah, all the girls came. Now, I was confused. This whole moment was supposed to be about Eva and her grandfather, but Sir Nini decided to make it about herself and Greg. Like, girl, the fuck? I just couldn't. I really couldn't. So, you know, um, they leave to go to do this geisha thing for, because that's what they're doing for this date is they're going to do a geisha, going to a geisha place. I don't know what they're called. Um, so all the girls get ready. They leave. Now they all get in the, in the bus, in the van and their Aya, she is, um, that she was, she meant what she said about be on time because all the girls are there except for Nini. Nini is not on time. So shit, bitch, the bus leaves without Nene. And, you know, she uh, they call her and they tell her, you know, we'll save a seat for you. She's like, oh, don't worry. I'm not coming. I'm not coming. I would be like, fine, bitch. You ain't coming. I don't give a fuck. And she gets on my nerves. Like, you know, you want people to be on time to your shit and respect your time. But when it comes to this woman and her time, you don't want to be respectful of it. Like, that's rude as fuck. Like, seriously, that's rude as all fuck. So, um, you know, all the girls that go there, they have a good time. You know, when they get there, they tell them to be quiet because there's a lot of performance going on with the geishas. So then they go in there and they watch the geishas perform. So then we see Nene, she's back in her room and, you know, she's trying to call Greg back in the States, but Greg is not answering her phone. And then the producers come in there and she's been hella rude to the producers. And I'm just like, like, fuck you get on. I don't know how anybody works with her. I'm sorry because you can just see that she has a big ass ego and she thinks the world of herself when she shouldn't. Like, ugh, good God. Um, so then she, she blocked Greg because he wasn't responding to her. I'm like, well, whatever. I don't even give a fuck. Um, so then the others, they are, you know, still at the Geisha place. They're playing games. I think everybody won their game with the exception of Eva, I think. So then they go out to eat at a vegetarian restaurant and Candy is absolutely not here for it, which we know she ain't here for it. Her fat ass like food. We know that. Um, So, you know, uh, Sir Nini, she shows up and, you know, um, she's telling Porsche about the stuff that's going on with Greg. I'm not going to reiterate it, but, you know, you know what it is. Um... So then once that's all over, you know, Tanya pulls Nene to the side and she wants to talk to Nene. And, you know, she's telling Nene that she just was hurt and, you know, um, she felt like Nene was speaking negatively about her and Paul when Nene had spent the most time with her of all the girls. Once again, Nene downplays this bullshit. Somebody wasn't me being negatively. I just said I didn't give a fuck. Well, that's still negative, bitch. Like, do you not know what the fuck negativity is? That big bitch worked on my nerves this whole episode. I'm so sorry to say that. She keep calling her a bitch, but that's how she acted. And if you act like that, I got to call you what you acted like. And she was still continuing to be a bitch because Tanya was just like, can't we just move forward and have fun for the trip for Eva? And she was still being a bitch to Tanya. I'm like, oh my God, what the fuck? Like, oh, and I know Andy is never going to get rid of Nene because he loves her so fucking much. But that was Real Housewives of Atlanta. Like the video, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys later.